Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Business Plus. My name is Rachel Kahogo. Beautiful, beautiful Monday. I believe you've had a wonderful day. So today I'm bringing you an episode in Nairobi. And today we, as you can see, it tells we are in a studio. This is Octave Studios. I'm sure you've heard of it. And I'm with Keith Karanja. He is the founder and CEO of Octave Studios. He'll be telling us what happens here. Uh, it's a recording studio. So what we want to be a recording studios or we want to be a studio recording studios or you already have a studio um, and you want to scale up in that business. This is the place to be. Remember, you can talk to us uh, through MBC ITV Facebook page for comment section and we will be getting your questions. We'll be getting your concerns. And uh, let's get into the discussion. Hi. Hello. Karibu sana ndani ya business class Asante sana. and thank you for having us in Octave Studios. Karibu sana huko kwetu. Uh, yes. E, kuna kaa kuzuri. Ni kuzuri actually, ni kuzuri sana. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. enjoying the place. Yes, we yes. are enjoying the place. Yes. Tell me about Octave Studios. Ah, uh, Octave Studios. Wow. Mm. This place um started 2 years ago. Uh-huh. Uh, first of all, um, let me make a correction. Okay. Uh, I am the manager. I okay. have two partners. Mm. Uh, they are directors of this place. We work very closely together with them. All right. Um, I run this place. I manage uh, everything about this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I cannot call myself the, the founder, uh, the CEO, <laughs> of the founder. Or, right. I, I don't want to give yeah. myself that kind of a title. Okay. Octave started um, two years ago. We right. are two years old. Mm-hmm. Um, it was during the COVID period. Mm-hmm. Um, it started by we had seen a gap mm-hmm. um, in the music industry, mm-hmm. where first of all it's a Christian-based um, music studio. Okay. We had been going to other studios around the CBD, mm-hmm. where we kind of got not satisfied mm-hmm. um we find maybe you get a big space but the price is up there you yeah. go to maybe a place you can afford the space is a bit mm, small smaller. so yeah. we kind of saw a gap mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. and then it came as a business idea why mm-hmm. not start a business a similar one yeah. where you can bridge a gap of affordability mm-hmm. and space at the same time. Okay. So that is when Octave was birthed. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a way of us finding our own place because mm-hmm. we are music ministers in yeah. our own right. Mm-hmm. So where we used to go do rehearsals and all these places, mm-hmm. it was a bit challenging for yeah. us. Mm-hmm. So that is when now we discovered that we can have our own where we come and do our own stuff mm. and also make it a business in itself. All right. Yes. And you've mentioned something. Yes. Do you have to be a music minister or do you have to be a musician for you to start uh, <laughs> a recording studio or a studio per se? Uh, well, you ought to have the passion for music. Okay. You do not necessarily have to be a music minister mm. because I, I would say most of my clients are music ministers. Right. I also have clients who are musicians. Mm. Actually, all of them are musicians. Yeah. So um, it's not that I've limited it to just uh, the music ministry mm. itself. Mm. It is a creative space okay. for all musicians where they can come, mm-hmm. um, have ambient uh, environment, mm. have the best of equipment mm. to be creative, mm-hmm. to do their own stuff in their own space, mm. how they want to. Okay. Uh, be also creative in how also they can diversify themselves in mm. the music that they also want to produce. All right. Yeah. And uh, about the ambience, mm. yesterday you were here yeah. and you talked about the ambience out there in Avila. Sometimes people just come in after recording, mm. they want to go and like think, take a break. Yeah. Alafo, at that time, when mm. I was in ah, I have thought of something. Mm. And I went home thinking, is it, is it really important for a studio equal at a certain location? Ama ni zamu watu mimi studio angu wacha nike kuma shamba. Ama nike katikati ya town. Is there any, anything located to location, your yeah, studio, and things that happen around? First of all, location was key for really? us. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, we wanted to have a place that was central in the first place. Right. That's why we are based in, in the CBD. Mm-hmm. Um, it is very proximal to um, 
the major matatu stages mm. here and there. Mm. So you find it is very central because some people uh, they can easily get to maybe where they are alighting from. Mm -hmm. It takes them a few minutes to get yeah, here. To get here right. And also because it's in the CBD, most mm -hmm. people who are also working in the CBD mm -hmm. find it convenient that they can leave the offices at uh, in the evening, maybe at 5, they are, mm. they're having a session, yes. maybe at 5.30 or at 6, yes. they get here on time. Mm. They maybe get to relax for a bit mm -hmm. before they start processing what they need to come and do. Yeah. Mm. So location is key. Mm -hmm. It was very paramount that we find a place that is central, mm -hmm. that is also convenient for our clients mm -hmm. to get here, mm -hmm. and also convenient enough that mm. um, they can be able to create stuff freely mm. so um when we started we mm -hmm. didn't actually start from the floor that we're in okay. we started at fifth floor mm -hmm. and then because this place was empty at that time that's mm -hmm. why we decided to move here okay. and then once we moved here that is where now we kind of saw the um, ambience around here mm. and then how clients really enjoyed even better mm. because we were when we were at fifth floor uh -huh. they didn't kind of know this place yes. uh, mm. that they didn't have familiarity with the place mm. oh and so, just so you know guys we are at the rooftop so yes <laughs> you see the whole of Nairobi really well yeah so yeah. they come here sometimes they take nice photos I'm sure you took mm. some few photos yes. uh, of the just the the skyline mm. of Nairobi. Well, it's not necessarily the prettiest one you can get. It is pretty. Yeah, it yes. is. So um, that kind of ambience mm. um, kind of activates some creative juices, if I may call yeah. it, that people come, they get to sit down, relax first, mm. and then they get to their creative mind. Mm. They start thinking, they start processing, ideas start to flow. Mm. If they are a group, when the ideas start to flow, you get that they start sharing yeah. ideas here mm. and there. So that to me kind of like sums it all up, that we have provided this space, we have, we have provided uh, at least an ambient surrounding mm. where just normal creatives, every creative yeah. person mm. can just come, first mm. of all, chill out. Yes. Before yeah. they come in studio, they mm. just chill out, Relax. they enjoy the air outside, mm. and then once they come here, they get to do what they do um, as quickly as they can, yes. as fast as they can, mm. because at that time, mm. they're, they're now they're, freshened they're, up. Their thought process is yeah. already active, mm. so it gets to, they get mm. to enjoy themselves mm. even more. And easier. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, talking about Octave Studios, Tukangilea mm. Studio, anyone would think just recording a mm. song. Mm. So apart from recording songs, is there anything else that happens around the studio? Um, so first of all, recording is one of the services we offer. Okay. Um, the major one, as mm. you can probably tell mm. around here, um, it's a rehearsal space. Okay. So a rehearsal space is uh, one where maybe I can have a team come. Mm -hmm. They are having maybe an event somewhere. Mm -hmm. And because of convenience of everyone, they come here, they get to rehearse mm -hmm. what they are going to do. Some even come uh, in the afternoon and they're having a gig mm. uh, in the evening. Really? Yeah, like they come here and then in two hours they are going for a gig somewhere. So mm. they just come for two hours. quickly do whatever yeah. it is they are doing, mm. master their parts really mm. well. So that when they go, because they are getting paid where yeah. they are going to pay, mm. and by them performing to the best is how also they get paid. Yeah. So you get some of these people I've hosted before, that is what they do for mm. a living. Yeah. So they take what they do seriously. Mm. So I have to uh, take whatever it is they do, mm. give them what they want, yes. make it uh, conducive for them mm. to do what they need mm. to do. Yeah. So that when they go out there, they get to enjoy themselves, they right. uh, enjoy also with the audience that mm. they are having there. Mm -hmm. So this majorly is a rehearsal space for yeah. now. Yes. Um, recordings, I do them, I do live recordings, mm. I do uh, normal audio recordings, mm -hmm. I do video uh, recordings as well okay. here. So um, everything, by the way, is done digitally. Mm. We're in the age where everything yeah, is done digitally. digitally right. So um, everything here mm -hmm. uh, is fed to my uh, digital equipment. So mm -hmm. recording becomes very easy. Yeah. Uh, also, even mastering becomes very easy. Mm -hmm. So 
that is basically what this is. Okay. It's a rehearsal space at mm. first, mm. and then the recording bit um, comes as additional uh, services that we offer here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what's the process that happens from me recording mm. or having a maybe rehearsals okay mm -hmm. for rehearsals it could be a little bit different mm -hmm. but for me recording either audio or video mm -hmm. the final one people would think it's just like this recording and getting what i did oh no it's not <laughs> easy yeah so mm -hmm. what's what's the process that happens in between um so first of all there is the preparation bit okay. you have to come prepared knowing what you're coming to record. Mm -hmm. um, you, you just don't show up and say you want to come and do a recording. Mm, yeah. um, the producer will just look at you like, okay, what do you want to record? Mm, yes. Uh, so mm. the preparation comes early. Mm -hmm. So the producer, now me, I come, I listen to what you, what ideas you have. Mm -hmm. And then from then on now, I can create something or yeah. if you already have something created mm -hmm. it's just curating it now or maybe the piano yeah. or maybe the guitar mm. and then the recording bit starts mm -hmm. and then as the recording continues mm -hmm. you get different ideas coming mm. like this would yes. sound better uh, this would sound better yes. I like this tone mm. Mm. this tone sounds better than then what the, other one. the initial yeah. one so that is when now all the recording bit comes, the ideas get shared here and there. Mm -hmm. And then now um, post-production comes, yeah. where now the producer now will come sit down mm -hmm. and listen to everything. Mm -hmm. And now he will add a few things, plugins here and there, mm -hmm. um, just to, it's adding spice. Yeah. I would call it mm. uh, oh, yeah, making it better. Yeah, just making it yes. better. Maybe he didn't uh, hear something he didn't like. Yeah. There's a way you can change it. Mm. Uh, maybe use a few other things that you have here yeah. and there at your mm. disposal. Mm -hmm. You can also add a few other things on your instruments mm -hmm. if you want to. Um, that's all what happens. Yeah. Post production is it's a long process. Mm -hmm. But it's now where the music is made. That is now music. where it is made now. Okay. Everything is done. Mm. And then when the final product uh, comes up, mm -hmm. um, the client comes, mm -hmm. has a listen to it. If they enjoy it, well and good. If yeah. they feel like this would have sound better, mm. that is when now we can go back now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe and tweak a few other things. Uh -huh. Because everything is paramount to the client. We give the client what they want. Yeah. So we have to make sure that the client, number one, mm. likes what they, mm. they love what mm. they hear. Yeah. Once they love what they hear, mm -hmm. if they want to tweak something, that is when now we can come tweak a few things yeah. here and there, maybe mm. make changes here and there. Mm. Once they're completely satisfied, mm. that is when now we give the client their product. Wow. Yeah. The client is always right. The, uh, yeah, I would say. <laughs> I would okay, say, yeah. all right. So we'll hold it right there. Okay. We get into the business one one so that you can get tips for what you need to start such a business or scale up if you are in this business. Then we will be coming back. I was also interested to get what you said about bridging the gap so you can make sure that you're not charging or overcharging, yeah. but also you have everything. Most of the time, from Juanga, we pay for quality. Come up to the Komzuri, even then mm. the charges will be so high. <laughs> so how do you just balance to make sure that you get your income? Because I know business is, you have to get money, right? Yeah. So how do you balance that? But in the meantime, let's get into the business one one. Hello viewers, uh, this is Keith from Octave Studios. I have a few tips for you if you're thinking about starting uh, this business enterprise. So number one, you really need to have the passion and the love for uh, music, uh, producing music, just general love for music because you have to love what, you, what you're doing because if you do not love what you're doing, it uh, you're wasting time, you're wasting resources if you're investing. Uh, number two, you need to get the right people to work with. So if you have zero idea, uh, you don't have a clue on what uh, the music industry is all about, that is when you need maybe friends who have an understanding or have the knowledge of uh, this industry, how it works, uh, just to help you, give you a helping hand, 
uh, so that if you are investing uh, maybe in equipment, if you are investing in sound, you get to know what kind of uh, equipment or maybe the kind of uh, thing that musicians love uh, that maybe your future clients would want uh, to have. Uh, number three, you really need to have basic knowledge, at least kidog or two, of running a business. Uh, running a business is not easy. There are challenges that uh, come here and there. You really need to know how to handle uh, crisis, to do crisis management. Uh, also know uh, how to research on how to better your business, how to uh, just do whatever it is necessary for you to grow your business uh, uh, and improve everything you need to improve about your business. Uh, number four is use social media. Uh, one of the biggest uh, achievement in spreading uh, the word of Octave is use of social media. Social media has helped me. It is free, by the way. Uh, you can just have maybe Instagram handles, Facebook handles, TikTok handles, and these are places people are. So if you want to reach out to your clients, social media is the way to go. Uh, you get, you reach a wide range of uh, people. Uh, word of mouth works as well because maybe people have come over, seen your place, they've loved the space, they've spread the word. But social media, you get to find different clientele uh, who have zero knowledge, who have zero idea of who you are. So if they get to see uh, your uh, place in social media, they will be interested because musicians are everywhere. Uh, last bit is uh, make sure in everything, 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 you keep God first. This is a Christian based uh, studio. Uh, we love God here. Uh, there's always a sense of a presence and uh, a higher authority in this place. Every time people come here, they get to experience that. So I get to have people who come here and they get to have an experience that even I can't explain. And then they get to tell me, uh, Keith, there is something here. There's something I have not experienced somewhere else. So I would say uh, knowing God, loving God, keeping God fast in everything that you do, that is paramount. And that is what has helped my business. Uh, all in all, if you want to start, you start. Uh, find people to work with. It is better uh, to have someone to work with. You will work further when you work with someone rather than working fast alone. So get people, network with people who will help you grow. Uh, and that's all what you need to maybe have a business like this or in general have a business anywhere else. So use those tips, I'm sure they will help you. My name is Keith Karanja, I am the manager for Octave Studios and you are watching Business Plus. Right, so we are back and uh, thank you for the Business 101. It's very educative. So you know what you need to do if you're getting into this business or you are already in this business. Also, when you come out any musician palenger, now you know where to go because you have to get quality. And you've seen that quality is right here. So we had said about balancing Mamboya Pesa and what you what you give here, it's good quality. So how do you make sure that as much as you're giving the best and you're not overcharging, you still have something for yourself? Um the balancing bit comes um, when now you have to measure what is coming in mm -hmm. and how much, uh, the kind of quality of service you're giving. Okay. So we have to make sure that first of all, the quality of service mm. that is being given. Mm -hmm. Quality by here, I mean the kind of equipment uh, that we have. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you one thing, mm -hmm. musicians know what they want. Right. Those oh, are people do. that uh, no, will be like, Kenya. Eh, like <laughs> what a I want a certain piano. Right. I like a certain piano. Mm. Like a certain sound. Mm. Um, when I interact with maybe certain vocalists, mm -hmm. they'll be like, I want to hear my voice in a certain way. Mm. I like hearing the guitar in a certain yeah. manner. So I have to make sure that mm -hmm. every 
uh, service that I offer mm -hmm. is met with the highest quality of standard mm -hmm. that the client will want to come back. That's the first thing. Yeah. They don't just go and then they go forever. Yes. I they're want to still, make sure that they mm, come back. Yeah. I have to make sure that they enjoy the service mm. so much that they'll be like, this studio, this is just this studio, this is yeah. just something about mm, it. Mm. Let me go back. Yes. So um, the balancing um, comes, um, we are now in an economic crunch, mm -hmm. as we can tell. Yeah. So um, that is when now maybe the balancing bit, we can kind of scale it up to maybe benefit the business. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, um, in this kind of economic crisis that we are living in mm. right now, mm. you get things have gone up. Yes. Oh, yes. So if, if you are offering the best of services, mm -hmm. you can maybe try and raise up uh, the price mm -hmm. just a bit mm. um, so that it doesn't hurt the client's yes. pocket. Yeah. And then it also doesn't end up uh, hurting you mm. as a business itself. Yeah. So you just have to balance everything up. You don't just raise everything up mm. just because things are up. Yeah. You raise your prices. Mm. You also have to consider that these are clients also mm -hmm. who are living in the times that you're living in. Mm. And also you have to explain to your clients mm. as well. Mm. Why are we charging this? We are charging this yeah. uh, because uh, we understand we are offering a service. Uh -huh and we were offering it at this kind of mm, price. Mm. So why we are raising it is mm. because everything this has gone has up, gone up. we're living in a current yeah, time. Yeah. So we're just raising it up a bit mm. just to make sure that we stay afloat mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. That there is good balance. That's just some good balance. Right. And uh, the good thing is because mm -hmm. all clients, uh, you know, we are not living in different yes. worlds. They are, are yeah, and they see what's happening. Yeah, they're very yeah. reasonable, they're very understanding. Mm. So, so most of the clients that I've had uh, and I still have, mm. they really understood sometimes why the prices kind mm. of change they and fluctuate. Change. Yes. So um, they get to understand mm. as well. Okay. So just a bit of balance here that benefits the business mm. and also doesn't chase the client away. Mm. Yeah. And that brings me to customer relations and mm. I know that you've gotten the tip, your customer relations there, that you need to really relate well with your customers so that even as you tell them that we're going to raise the prices high a bit, they understand and you, you explain to them Vizuri Sana because if you don't have a good customer relation with your customers, then that becomes a problem because you can imagine telling someone that Apana, it's your 500, Saini 2500 and they look at you like, huh, 2500 for what? You get it? So you have to create a good, good relation yeah. with your and customer. And also mm -hmm. considering that this same service is provided elsewhere. Yeah. So you're also in kind in competition, I would mm. say, with other rehearsal spaces yes. around. Mm. So you don't want to raise the prices and then they, they look to another alternative. Yeah. So you want and to keep them, yes. but also make sure that you're benefiting mm. by keeping them mm. as well. Yes. Yeah. And that brings me to something else um, about, of course we have, as you've said, we have other studios and they are a lot of studios. So why will the customer decide that I'll, I'll go to Octave and the next time I'll still go to Octave? So what 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 is unique and what would you tell our viewers who are in the same business mm. that they should when at Akanawaike is if it was unique in their own studios just to make them um, be at spa? Um, I would say what has worked for me mm -hmm. is, as you've said, good customer uh, relations. client relations. Yeah. I would, uh, every client that I host here, mm -hmm. Whether new, whether regulars, I have regulars, I have new clients, mm. I have clients who frequent. Mm. So every time they come here, mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I attend to whatever they need. Mm. You get to find maybe in studios elsewhere, I have had, I, have, I cannot confirm. Mm. The, they get that they have very good equipment, they mm. have even better than what I have mm. maybe. Um, but the customer relations yeah, is, is not as good as mm. they want it yes, to be. Yeah. They want attention sometimes mm. to some of the things that they want handled in real time. Mm -hmm. So 
good customer relations for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. is very key. Okay. That I would come to you and ask you, mm -hmm. tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. If it's a sound you want to hear, and I will make sure I give it to yeah. you. If it is maybe balancing of the sound mm -hmm. here, I have sure clients that you who yeah, I have clients who have come here for one time, and they are like, "Where has this studio been? Mm -hmm. I have never had sound like this yeah. before." So um, it's just a matter of knowing your client, mm -hmm. knowing your client needs, mm -hmm. so that you make sure that they enjoy it so much. Mm -hmm that the first thing, the first studio that they would mm. want to call yeah. for any rehearsal, mm. it's, for octave. it's octave. Mm. So it is inst instilling octave in their mind yeah. so much mm. that it's in the back of their mind yeah. that it will be the first thing they think mm. about. Mm. When they want to record a live exactly. recording or yeah. uh, have a rehearsal. Exactly. All right. And let's talk about the licensing mm -hmm. for people who want to start such a business mm -hmm. or someone who wants to put up a studio. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the licenses that I need? Uh, licenses, mm, maybe you, you only need um, maybe to pay the city council mm -hmm. uh, and KRA. Okay. So I pay my taxes. Mm. I pay my taxes. Mm. Okay, Very I, important. I pay my taxes, yeah. Please. Uh, and I also pay the city council the licensing fee that I need here. So the license that I have mm. covers everything. Okay. It's a license for entertainment mm. and uh, equipment, uh, this kind of equipment, having mm. this kind of equipment. Yeah. Uh, it's in a bracket they call uh, media and, entertain and entertainment. Mm. I forget yeah. this. Uh, so it is a license that I pay annually. Mm -hmm. uh, I pay it to the Nairobi uh, City Council offices. Mm -hmm. uh, every year I make sure I have made my payments yeah. in time. Mm -hmm. So that one just basically is uh, kind of the license I, that you would mm -hmm. need. Yes. If there are any licenses that mm -hmm. you may need, maybe that is uh, from an individual mm -hmm. where maybe you can come and record and say you want to license your own product mm -hmm. but now you have to enlist uh, octave as part as uh, a part of the mm. let's say the process that you do the music yeah. process that mm. you that mm -hmm. you because have. you actually recorded the music yeah here. so it's just maybe an individual license maybe from the music copyright society mm -hmm. but that one is on an individual basis all right yeah all right so, and for anyone who would want to start such a business, what would you say is the capital for a starter? <laughs> yeah, that's always a very tricky question. Uh, Super, did you help? <laughs> <laughs> really? Ah, uh, that is a tricky question. Uh, wow. Um, or what do I need? Let's let's keep it that way. What do I need to start a studio? Uh, so. It depends the kind of studio you want first. Right. If it's a recording studio, mm. recording studio you can have even a recording setup even at home. Mm -hmm. um, if you have maybe a really nice recording microphone, you yeah. have uh, a sound card, you have your laptop. Mm. It is very easy for you to um, have your own small music setup at mm. home. Um, I've seen it, I have friends who have studios at home. Mm -hmm. They only have uh, minimal equipment yeah. and they make awesome music. Yeah. Um, for here, this one is uh, kind of an investment mm. where now you need to budget. Uh, budget on equipment, mm. you need to budget on uh, the soundproof, mm -hmm. you need to budget on rent, yeah. you need to budget on licenses. Mm and every any other thing that maybe uh, clients would need mm. um, so i would say make it an investment don't look for capital mm. as such yeah. uh, look for investment an investment plan maybe mm. where you can just invest money slowly mm -hmm. uh, and make sure that you get whatever you need yeah. just get the necessities mm. Uh, get maybe one piano, mm. a set of drums, mm. guitars, yeah. and then slowly build up, slowly mm. build up. Um, everything here uh, just started 
immediately because uh, and as I said, we started during the COVID time. Yeah. That was a tough time. Yes. Uh, and I really thank God that we started at that time mm. because the equipment we got here, we got them at really affordable prices. Mm -hmm. um, right now, those yeah, these equipments they getting are them expensive. now, the prices have gone yes, up. Yes. I was actually researching on this uh, one of these pianos mm -hmm. here. Uh, you, I found out that it is now double the price. So you start from where you are. Start with, with start what you have. What you have. Yes. Right then there. you build up slowly by slowly. Then in a minute, because you've mentioned the sound proofs, and I see, I, I know that you have noticed about the mm -hmm. sound proofs. Why is it important to have um, the sound proofs? Uh, so these sound panels, mm -hmm. we we share building mm. with. Uh, other tenants yeah and uh, fortunately there are uh, people who know the law very mm. well uh, sometimes uh, they get to really